Come clean and tell the truth. That's a demand from the former postmistress as ex-post office boss Paula Venels faces the Horizon IT inquiry and the scandal's victims to give evidence today. Yeah, she's remained hidden and pretty much silent so far, only being seen through her portrayal in the ITV drama Mr Bates versus the post office. Although there was a moment more recently when she was approached by Channel 4 News last month. She can't do that today. She's no. going to have to talk today. Yeah. And this is the scene in central London where Paula Van Oss is due to arrive at the inquiry shortly. She won't be able to stay silent. She'll have to answer those questions. And it's a moment many of those wrongly accused, wrongly convicted in the case of Joe Hamilton, who joins us now, she's been waiting for. In fact, I, I, our reporter this morning said that places in that inquiry room today are rationed. Yeah. Because there's so many of you want to get in and see the whites of Paula Venel's eyes and see what she says. Have you managed to get a spot this morning? I shall be in the front row <laughs> with so the you, legal team, yeah. You are granted access in yeah. order to be able to get in. Joe, what happened to you was heinous. You were wrongly accused of stealing £36,000. And you said, it's not me, there must be a problem. And you were told by the Horizon helpline... I was the only one. You're the yeah. only one. Yeah. Made to feel how? Well, I felt guilty. I, I thought it was something I was doing, you know, because I wasn't in the least bit computer literate. And we're going back to 2003, which, you know, they'd pretty much, in my world, just about been invented. And um, if you're told you're doing something wrong and you're the only person that's got problems, I believed it. You were honest. You said there's something going wrong. They said it's only you. So you said, all right, well, it must be me. As a result, you pled guilty to... Uh, a charge of false accounting. Yeah, they and... charged me with theft in the beginning and we got right to trial and then they said, well, if you plead guilty to false accounting, we'll drop the theft, which got them out of disclosing anything. And I felt I had committed false accounting because one, once I stopped ringing up saying there's money short because they said they'd sack me, um, I felt I had committed false accounting. So Yeah, because you had to do things to make the sums yeah. add up. Yeah. But the I, thing is, it was... The accounting was false. It just wasn't you. <laughs> you just, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly yeah. right. You ended up probation for a year in Crown Court. Now, it's a scene which is one of the most emotional scenes in Mr Bates versus the post office. But describe for us what it was like in court because you had the community turn up to support you, didn't you? Yeah, 70, 74 people uh, were above me. I could hear them clattering around and whispering and everything upstairs. I was in this massive dock downstairs and there, I, I remember him locking, locking the door, locked me in and we waited for the judge to come in. And I, I was told by the probation office that I was 75% likely to go to prison. And I just literally waited and, um, and he, he, he was so confused. He looked around the room and kept shaking his head going, why are you in my court? Why are you pleaded guilty to a serious criminal offence? You know, but you actually can't say anything. Um, and then it ended up, the vicar spoke for me. Um, and then he said, well, I'm not considering a custodial sentence. The judge said The judge this. said. And I, I almost fainted, I think. I was just so relieved. I had tears pouring down my face. Yeah. And you believe that was because of the people supporting you at the time? You definitely, realize the definitely. community wanted you. Because other people who went didn't have the support and they went to prison. Um, so, so I do believe the village saved me. We've, we have Paula Venels giving evidence today. This mm. is the first time and that is, that is, of course, a big moment. Now, it, many people believe that she lied. Do you think she lied to everybody? Do you think she, she also lied to herself? Or, or do you think she, this was something that was overt and she knew exactly what was going on? Why, in your emotional view, um, do you think, what do you think she's done? I think she has to have known it's been going on. You know, she, she can't be stupid to be, to be CEO. Um, and you have to know. Um, but, you know, how much she knew, we're going to find out. Mm. But she had to have been aware of what was happening because she was head of the tree, you know? She, it was the head of the post office after you were convicted, so from 2012. But the trouble is, for Paula Venels, 
is that ITV News revealed last night that she was given the files of eight sub-postmasters, including Lee Castleton, yeah. who you know well. His story is also yeah. featured in Mr Bates in the post office. And she was told they tell the common story, presumably evidence of the problem. And these were people who were wrongly accused and convicted. It was, a, it was documents which clearly showed there was a problem. She was shown these documents. It related to a scheme designed to mediate their complaints. But she later told Parliament that there wasn't evidence of wrongdoing or miscarriages of justice. So something's not right there. I know, I know. Well, I, I sat behind her in the um, Select Committee in 2015, and you could see by the body language, you know, that... <laughs> well, I, I believe she knew then, um, in 2015, and, you know, it, it was... If you actually look at her body... Well, there she is. <laughs> if you actually look at her body language, um, it, she knew. She, but we'll find out. We'll yeah, see what and she's she'll to say. need to answer for why, if she was shown evidence of miscarriages of justice, why she told MPs two years later there was no evidence of miscarriages of justice. Yes, I'm sure they'll ask that question. <laughs> it's, it, it's interesting, isn't it? Because it was a vicar who spoke up for you in court. Yeah. Uh, Paula Vannels is a reverend. Uh, she's spoken for the Church of England. She's clearly a religious, a devout woman. Mm. It seems almost a paradox that the person who, in your view, has denied you justice and stopped people getting out of being wrongly convicted is someone who is, is someone of conviction. I mean, there was evidence given last week by the former chief financial officer of the post office mm -hmm. who said he didn't believe emotionally she had accepted what's gone on, which is why I was sort of stressing before this in her head. She might have known it logically, but she's not accepted it. What, what is going on here? It's, it's hard to believe on a personal basis, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's really hard, and I'm, I'm fascinated to know how she's going to play it. She'll either come in and bear all or she'll double down like most of them have, you know, and uh, just, deny, well, not deny it, but just can't recall it, so... The thing is that, it, you know, even though she was head of the post office after you were convicted, she was there the entire time you were fighting against your conviction because your conviction was eventually quashed 2021, a couple of years after yeah. she left the post office. She could have done so much more to exonerate you. I know, we've been, I mean, we've been shouting for years and I did the first panorama um, with Noel, who went to prison um, in 2015. That came out. They did everything to stop the programme coming out. Um, so I can't believe she didn't watch it. No, that's, that would be hard to believe as well. Noel Thomas, now 77 years old, jailed for false accounting back in 2006 after being held responsible for £48,000 missing from the accounts of his post office on Anglesey. Joe, you accepted compensation. You felt you had to, I think it was 80% 80%, of what yeah. you claimed. You know, your husband, not very well. Yeah. You know, there was a point at which you felt like you had to stop fighting for yourself. You haven't stopped fighting for everyone else, though, have you? No, no, because 400 of the group that originally went to court and fought the group litigation, um, they still haven't been paid, and it's wicked. Including Mr Bates? Including Mr Bates. I had dinner with him last night, and he's, yeah, he's um, on fighting form mm. <laughs> and looking forward to today. And so. he'll presumably be there in the front row as yeah. well today? I, yeah, I think he's going to be there. He's doing something first, but you wouldn't tell me. No, <laughs> no, no, he keeps his schedule close to yes. his chest, quite right, because, um, you know, everybody wants to talk to him as well as to you, Joe. It is always good to see you. Thank you. It, it, your story is so remarkable. How, as the judge said, effectively, I'm going to paraphrase the judge, what on earth are you doing in my courtroom? <laughs> yeah. What are you doing? Pleading guilty to such a serious crime. It wasn't your fault. You were completely falsely accused. You should have been exonerated the minute they realised that this was a network bug in the Horizon system. You've suffered for far too long. You haven't really, as you know, got the justice you deserve. But let's hope that Paula Venels answers all the questions you want asked today in yeah. front of MPs. And we'll keep an eye on that um, MPs inquiry.
because there is the queue of people waiting in the rain to go in and the photographers who will be taking pictures of Paula Venels and our cameras spotting her arrival this morning. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I, tell you, I was mulling this yeah. with my sort of my day job hat on, if you like. Yeah, and your campaigner's hat on as well, I expect. <sighs> what is fascinating mm. is most times when you see the public accuse, say there's a conspiracy, yeah. it's usually incompetence, not right. conspiracy. In my experience, it's usually incompetence. But when you look at the weight of evidence that came through here, it is very tough to assign this one to incompetence. The systemic scalability of incompetence this must have had mm. to, for it to got through and the lack of bravery for not one individual along that entire causal loop running the country to pull out and say, hold on, have we not passed an evidential chain that says this is wrong? Yeah. Makes it quite tough to believe this one was incompetence. Joe, just on that, do you think the post office just assumed you were all with your fingers in the till? I think they may have done from the out at the very beginning, but if you look at the figures, someone somewhere must have realised that it went from like three prosecutions a year to up to 70 when we were all being nicked. Um, you know, someone should have put two and two. They roll out a new software system and all of a sudden the prosecutions go up, you know. But of course, in those days, we, we didn't join up with each other like you do now. Well, it's, the so. biggest lie, the biggest single lie is telling you it was just you. Yeah. That, that, that's at the yeah. heart of all of this. That's at the yeah. heart of the injustice, which is why in a modern internet world, it's more difficult for those things to happen, yeah. thankfully. Joe, thank you very much indeed. We thank look you. forward to finding out um, how you respond to what Paula Venner says, and we'll Speaking speak to you later you. on. Thank you. <laughs>